This conference will now be recorded. Santa Claus, I'll just, I'll just give a few more moments for some additional folks to join and then we'll get started. Okay, so we'll kick things off. Good morning, all. My name is Kevin McCabe, and on behalf of the Battery Park City Authority, I am pleased to welcome you all to today's featured Climate Week event, Building the 15-Minute City. This morning, I am joined by Gwen Dawson, Battery Park City Authority's Vice President of Real Property, as well as Michaela Hoskins, Robert Akpala, and Anna Sarah of Burrow Happold Engineers, who have been an integral partner of the authorities as we build a more sustainable future. Now, a question you may be asking yourself is what exactly do we mean by a 15 minute city? While the concept is by no means new, over recent months it has been cited internationally as a model for the future, as, a, as part of a movement to make our lives and cities more convenient, less stressful, and more sustainable. 15 minute cities provide a safe, connected, and inclusive environment where one can access most, if not all, of their daily needs within a short walk or bike ride. This includes having access to local amenities while being able to enjoy clean parks and open spaces within one's immediate surroundings. Moreover, 15-minute cities are champions of sustainability and ensure their local infrastructure is protected from the elements for generations to come. This concept not only improves the quality of life for local residents, but has a positive impact on the environment as travel and carbon emissions are reduced. Our objective today is to illustrate how Battery Park City has been successful in building a 15-minute city and to present our ambitious sustainability plans for the future in the hope that we can serve as a global model for others to end Now, when we begin to speak about how Battery Park City has become a 15-minute city, it's imperative that we acknowledge the history of the neighborhood and the Battery Park City's mission since its inception, which has to plan, which has been to plan, create, coordinate and sustain a balanced community of commercial, residential, retail, and park space with a designated 92-acre site on the lower west side of Manhattan. Now, in 1968, at the time of the creation of the authority, the existing area encompassed collapsing piers in the Hudson River, which through the 1950s had handled produce for Washington Market in the area now known as Trigeville. Ultimately, throughout the 70s and 80s, the land was reclaimed using landfill from the near, nearby excavation of the World Trade Center, along with fill dredge from the Hudson River bed. Plants of Battery Park City shared three goals, to expand the area of Lower Manhattan, attract residents to live downtown, and to develop additional parks and open spaces. <laughs> The 1970 master, 1979 master plan saw Battery Park City as an extension of the existing New York City grid and accomplished the objective to create a well-balanced mix of residential and commercial presence while setting aside one third of the project site for parks. In the 1980s, the first residential complex, Gateway Plaza, was built, as was the World Financial Center, today known as Brookfield Place, which, accompanied by the World Trade Center, solidified Lower Manhattan as a premier business hub. During the 1990s, Battery Park City's roads and infrastructure were built out to support the increased development on the project site. Battery Park City Authority became a leader in environmentally responsible residential and commercial building by the turn of the century, including the development of the Solaire in 2004, which was the first high-rise residential building in America to receive the U.S. Green Building LEED Gold status. Today, the neighborhood has grown into a well-rounded community home to more than 13,000 residents and 30 residential complexes, 
with nearly 11 million square feet of first class office and related retail space, accompanied by four public schools and three cultural institutions. Our parks programming team has activated our public space with more than 1,300 free parks programming events, including a wide array of cultural and well-being topics. We're also the proud host of more than 15 pieces of public art located throughout our 36 acres of world-class parks and urban spaces. And I would be remiss not to acknowledge our parks operations professionals who have meticulously managed our green spaces and are truly second to none in their craft. Now, despite our past successes, we acknowledge more work is always needed, particularly as we adapt to today's ever-changing environment. Accordingly, last year, we launched our very first strategic plan, which codifies our priorities for the future and offers a roadmap to enhance and improve our 15-minute city in Lower Manhattan through a number of initiatives. Firstly, as part of this strategy, we commit ourselves to remaining a vibrant public space featuring dynamic and diverse programming, world-class community levels, and public art that inspires residents and visitors alike. Secondly, we continue to strive to embrace diversity in culture and in operations, integrating climate resilience and sustainability policies, while strengthening collaboration on integrated government practices. We also are working diligently to preserve and expand housing affordability, which is certainly paramount to any 15 minute city, while also ensuring a vibrant business community meets the needs of its residents and provides a public realm accessible to all. I now welcome Battery Park City Authority's Gwen Dawson to speak on perhaps the most vital of these challenges, how we intend to protect our community from future climate shocks and stresses. We will be followed by Representative Earl Happel, who will speak to our ambitious sustainability for the coming decade. Gwen? Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yep. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. Um, I, I'll speak just a little bit about um, how Bar Battery Park City Authority is addressing um, matters of resiliency when it comes to um, climate change and uh, sea level rise. Uh, given our precarious position in lower Manhattan um, along the coast, um, along with uh, an extended coastline in lower Manhattan, Battery Park City Authority has taken on um, the challenge of planning for um, several resiliency projects that when completed will provide um, comprehensive protection from coastal surge and sea level rise um, for Battery Park City, as well as uh, certain additional parts of lower Manhattan. We have uh, divided those projects or the, that endeavor into four different projects, starting with the South Battery Park City Resiliency Project, um, and then um, we have also in, undertaken the a, a ball fields resiliency project, the North Battery Park City Resiliency Project, and um, the uh, one project that has not yet commenced is the West Battery Park City Resiliency Project. But our ob objective is to ensure that these projects are completed as quickly as possible. Um, with the full acknowledgement and knowledge that um, things are um, not getting better in terms of the risk um, involved. We certainly had um, an eye-opening experience uh, with Superstorm Sandy, and we are a number of years removed from that now, and we want to make sure that we try to get this in place uh, just as quickly as we can. Uh, I'll, I'll talk to you just a little bit about a couple of the projects that um, are underway. Um, so that you can get a little um, bit more detail of, of how we're approaching this. Next slide. Our um, South Battery Park City um, Resiliency Project, um, we're about 75% uh, design level uh, for this uh, project. It extends from the Museum of Jewish Heritage through Wagner Park across Pure Plaza and the north side of the Battery. Um, and as you can see, the objective um, that we are uh, endeavoring to, um, to achieve is um, not only um, protection from um, coastal surge and sea level rise, but also uh, we are working very diligently to, to weave uh, these protective measures into the fabric of Battery Park City so that they will ultimately prove to not only be a practical safety measure, 
but also an enhancement to the quality of life for the community as well as for the the many thousands of, of visitors that Battery Park City has each year. The, um, the uh, approach to um, that Wagner Park, uh, which you're looking at now it, within the South Battery Park City project is to raise the level of the park um, so that, that the measures, the protective measures at this point are passive. We, they don't involve uh, deploying um, just in time measures, but they're passive and are in place all the time, but they are woven into the fabric of the community. We'll go to the next one now. Uh, with respect to the ball fields, we had a, a very, um, a very uh, serious situation with the ball fields, uh, not because um, they are on the waterfront, but, but in uh, the case of Sandy, um, the um, vulnerable points at the south of Battery Park City and at the north of Battery Park City were, were breached and water infiltrated along West Street um, on our eastern boundary. And that uh, flooding actually caused the most significant damage that Battery Park City suffered during uh, Superstorm Sandy. So the approach that we um, have um, chosen in this particular instance is to create an interim um, solution. Do we have do we have the slide that shows that, Kevin? Is that still in here? Not this version. Thank you, Brian. Is, is it is is that is do we have the the That's slide? That is. That shows? Sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, the the approach that we've that we've uh, chosen for this um, particular project is to create um, an interim. Um, uh, barrier system that um, will um, provide protection from flooding along um, West Street and along the eastern boundary. Um, and it will be made of steel plates uh, fixed to the, the fencing around the ball field. And this will uh, provide protection for not only the ball field, but for uh, the adjacent community center um, operated by Asphalt Green. And um, at such time as we have the North project and the South project completed, then this project uh, will become redundant and the, um, the plating, the, the interim storm measures that have been created for this location will be able to be dismantled because um, the other projects will provide the protect protection needed. So that's just an example of a couple of the, um, the projects that we currently have underway for resiliency. Um, and they involve, as you have witnessed, um, different kinds of measures. Some um, are passive uh, in the form of, of changing the topography or creating a fixed um, barrier. Um, in other cases, there are um, deployable elements, flip up gates or uh, stack logs that that will create um, as uh, when taken as a whole, the protective measures that are needed. So we're, we're very excited about um, the advancement of these projects and are uh, looking forward to their completion. Um, with that, I wanted to turn it over um, to Borough Happold for a, a discussion of, of um, a, a more recent effort that Battery Park City Authority has undertaken in 2019 as a result of our board's uh, renewed commitment to sustainability, we retained Borough Happold, a global uh, leader in environmental and sustainable um, planning and engineering, um, to help us put together um, a, a um, series of planning documents to help us move our sustainability um, targets forward. So with that, I'll turn it over to Anna Sarah at uh, Borough Happold. Thanks, Gwen. Uh, good morning. I'm Anna Sarah from Bureau Happolds. Uh, at Bureau Happolds, we're honored to be supporting Battery Park City's ambitious um, sustainability plans and goals. Uh, and today we'll talk briefly about a set of documents that we've developed over the last few months um, precisely to facilitate uh, a transition toward uh, a more sustainable future. Next slide, please, Kevin. Uh, thanks. So we did so with a wonderful team of um, over 30 consultants from 10 different 
uh, areas of expertise. You'll see their names here. Next slide. Um, yeah, we also did it by engaging with over 500 of Battery Park City stakeholders. Uh, that process was crucial to this effort, and we'll talk a bit more about that. Um, I also think it's Im quite important to note uh, the potential impact of any Battery Park City uh, sustainability initiative by understanding its scale. Um, and the numbers of people it touches. Uh, approximately 16,000 people live here, about 50,000 work here, and about 700,000 visit every year. So uh, a huge potential for impact. And so the intent was for these documents to be a driver for change, but also a, a resource. And my colleague, uh, Michaela, will introduce the first of these two documents. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, so we'll start with the sustainability plan. So this, this plan really establishes a sustainability vision for Battery Park City, as well as a set of goals and a framework for action across key topic areas. And next slide, Kevin. So the Battery Park City sustainability vision is shown here, um, a Battery Park City that will serve as an innovative model for urban climate action, where all of us who live, work, and spend time here mobilize to create a sustainable future. And so a key element of this vision really is for a more sustainable neighborhood, but also that these sustainability efforts that are ongoing at Battery Park City are replicable and inspiring examples for other neighborhoods, both in New York City and beyond. And so, you know, for those listening who are excited or inspired by any of these commitments from Battery Park City, you know, do reach out to the Battery Park City Authority. They're happy to share lessons learned and ideas on how to enact sustainability in your own neighborhoods. So yeah, as you can see here, these are the four topic areas that the plan focuses on, uh, energy, water, materials and waste, and site, um, under which you know, fall these strategies that are addressed in the plan. And this covers everything from deep energy retrofits and electrification to water recycling, organic waste collection, quality of life and biodiversity. So this plan really was created as a holistic vision for sustainability at Battery Park City. And engagement was a key tenant of this planning effort. Um, throughout the planning process, BPCA and the Borough Hopple team engaged with nearly 500 individuals through a range of events, including public roundtables, pop-ups, an online survey. Uh, and this engagement process led to the inclusion of community ideas into the sustainability plan itself, where roughly 35% of the sub-actions came directly from these engagement activities. So onto the second document, the Sustainability Implementation Plan. Uh, this document builds on the Sustainability Plan's actions to develop detailed steps for implementation that will lead Battery Park City towards its sustainability goals. And as shown here, the implementation pl plan provides for each sub-action a list of implementation steps, uh, discrete responsibilities, responsible groups, and a timeframe for implementation. Uh, one of the key elements of this document really is the inclusion of a variety of resources for each sub-action that includes details on incentive programs, funding and financing opportunities, technical guides, training opportunities, among other things. Um, so overall, this document is meant to be a useful guide for a range of Battery Park City stakeholders who are taking action to ensure a more sustainable Battery Park City. And with that, I'll hand it back to Anna for the green guidelines. Great, so the third of the documents is the green guidelines, which are um, the best practice recommendations for physical interventions for both existing asset upgrades, uh, as well as new construction projects. The document uh, recommends methods uh, for achieving basically the objectives of the sustainability plan. So the guidelines, um, the document is organized in the same structure as the sustainability plan, as Michaela mentioned. So we have the same topic areas and, and uh, that structures the, the guidelines uh, in a similar way. It recommends prescriptive uh, strategies for existing assets. It does so at three levels of cost and complexity. Uh, from level one interventions that can be in essence do-it-yourself intervention types uh, to others that might be more costly or complex that require planning. 
It also recommends uh, performance, a performance-based uh, based approach for new construction projects. Um, and that's based on third party certification um, for a more holistic approach, basically. Uh, this method applies to both buildings and site projects, and the requirements are based on project type as well as the scale of the project itself. And really the, the intent um, by the authority with these initiatives and documents, uh, as mentioned um, previously, is also to provide resources to inspire uh, the Battery Park City community, as well as develop frameworks that can be replicated by other communities so that we can uh, basically inspire change beyond, beyond the boundary of uh, Battery Park City. Thanks, Anna. Well, as you can see, there is certainly much work that we have to do and we look forward to collaborating with our residents and partners as we accomplish our ambitious goals and with that we would like to welcome the floor to any questions um, you have a chat box available there but um, feel free to speak um, speak out if you have any questions for the authority or borough capital thanks In the meantime, we also certainly invite you to take down our contact information if any questions come to mind um, in the coming days or weeks. Feel free to always reach out and we'll be happy to provide you with the rest of the information. Okay, see them coming through. Okay, so one that has come across is how do how does the Battery Park City Authority's plans dovetail with local law 97 requirements? Robert, would you like to chime in on that? Yeah, hello everyone. Um, we um, have looked at a plan that is also um, dovetailed into um, things like local law 97 as well in terms of carbon um, a lot of the work uh, in terms of the activities on the plan and the um, implementation elements of the green guidelines um, support um, uh, helping uh, stakeholders you know building owners tenants occupants communities to move towards the plan in a way that they can make sense i think i think part of it is also i mean the plan is the plan and there's a lot of i guess um uncertainty about how to achieve the plan and i think what we've provided here in a suite of documents is a holistic way of starting to think about how are we going to get to the end goal so i would urge as well to think about this in terms of if you have um, things that you're thinking about in relation to local law 97 if you have challenges if you have opportunities i think in my mind the best way forward for us all is to collaborate and communicate because i think in doing that we will see the synergies across battery park city as a whole and i think it will help us to achieve that in the most effective cost efficient way Thanks, Robert. And we also have a question that I asked, what does Battery Park City need to do to move closer or to continue to become a 15 minute city? And in response to that, I, again, I'd uh, point to the, the resilience action plan, the strategic plan that Battery Park City unveiled last year, which really solidifies their commitment to becoming, to maintaining a, a vibrant community that is inclusive for all while providing amenities for the for local residents 
um, you know, particularly in today's environment. And you know, the sustainability factor is certainly something that cannot be under, under you know, overstated enough. Um, because if we, if we don't protect our infrastructure, then there, there's no community to enjoy. So. And lastly, Ryan, I see, your, I see a question about the sustainability documents. The documents are currently featured on our website under the sustainability tab. Our website is www.bpca.ny.gov. Okay. Well, thank you again for everyone who joined us this morning. We will make this presentation available online for those who were unable to, to join. If you know a friend or a colleague that would be interested in, in viewing it, we'll be happy to provide it. Feel free to reach out again. But thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your climate week. Take care.